In the electronic era that we live in, metadata is crucial when it comes to proving that something belongs to you. And metadata is information that is embedded within the actual image file. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go to show you. If I go to the Adobe uh, Stock Photos window, by the way, you can have more than one bridge window open at a time or an instance of the bridge. As you see here, I went to the Adobe Photos tab here and I did a search for Glacier. So if I right click and I choose file info I can find out about the photographer and all kinds of other information so let's take a look here we see that this is the description of this file this is the document title this is the author we see a description here of the file and we have keywords the keywords are important when you're trying to sell your images to a stock photography library so that when somebody like me does a search for example see this word glacier this is what I typed in and since this word has glacier as a part of its keywords the image shows up in my search results so you can type in any of these categories here or words and that image will show up in your search very important to put as many of these as possible that are relevant to your uh, your image now let's take a look up at this part right here very important the copyright notice this is embedded within the image as you see here so I know who owns this file I cannot use it without permission so what is public domain public domain is some kind of information or media that is no longer protected by copyright law it has expired and no one has renewed it which means you and I can use it at our leisure we can do whatever we, we like to we can remake it we can revise it we can do whatever you like because it's public domain it belongs to no one but the entire planet which is kind of cool now let's talk about some other information in this file that we would normally see we can see camera data but I'm gonna go to my other window let me go back to my other bridge instance here and show you in the samples folder that is contained within your Photoshop folder on your computer. You'll find a file called curves.dng and some other images here. So I'm going to right click on the curves.dng and once again I'm going to file info. And let's take a look at the metadata associated with this file. This one actually has camera data associated with it. So we can see the make and model of the camera, the time at which the image was taken, the shutter speed, and all kinds of other information such as the f-stop, the aperture value, and so on. We can also look at some other categories in this list here in, in relation to what you're doing. And this section here is pretty important. This is the IPTC contact. And as I mentioned in my Photoshop CS2 tutorial, I did a little homework to find out exactly what this means because if you're like me I don't like to see initials and not know what they are so I went to the web and I went to the IPTC.org website and it stands for International Press Telecommunications Council in other words it's a spy thing and as you see they, they probably have a whole bunch of standards that they have to adhere to and try to just make some guidelines I guess for photographers to follow so that's what the IPTC stands for all right, that's one to grow on. So as you as you can see that you get into the information here for that that contact person. And I guess this information is really useful for people who are in the media so that we know who took the photograph and who owns it and all that kinds of great stuff. So metadata once again is very important especially in the digital age where you know theft happens on a daily basis because the line between what's uh in print and what's online as far as copyright and ownership and all that kind of stuff is starting to blur so it's important to protect your information so wherever you can enter your information so people know that the, the photograph belongs to you and if they need to contact you give them the information and all that kind of stuff of course by the way I would always use a PO box instead of your actual address I never give anybody my real address because first of all I live in an undisclosed location as it is so protect your images protect your movies protect all of your digital media by using metadata wherever possible